Joseph Stanley here with Root at 2-7, a podcast ministry of Red House Baptist Church. And uh, I'm glad that you're uh, listening today. I know it's been a few weeks since uh, I've, we've had any episodes posted, but uh, we're trying to keep up with it at least once a week, once every two weeks, uh, to help people stay rooted and grounded in the truth of God's Word. Uh, as you go about your Christian life, we need to re- be reminded of what God's Word teaches us. We need to be reminded of what our goals should be as Christians. And we need to re- be reminded of the truth of how we're supposed to be living our lives and, and the voices that we spo- should be allowing into our lives. Uh, oftentimes we uh, hear a lot of things, and you may hear things from preachers, you may hear things from teachers, you may hear things in the world but how are we to process what we are hearing? What are we thinking about it? Are we discerning what is true and what is not true? And now that's sort of what I want to talk about today because Jesus gave us a very uh, specific warning. In uh, Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 15, he told us to be, be aware or beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but are inwardly are ravenous, ravenous wolves. So Jesus told us to beware of false prophets. To be aware of those who may come into the church, or may come into our lives, pretending to represent Christianity, pretending to represent the truth, but are really false prophets. And sadly to say, it seems like a lot of people in Christianity have been deceived by those who could be considered false prophets or false teachers. And I'm not saying generally all of Christianity, because sometimes preachers and people beat up on all Christians and say they're all being deceived and they're all following false teachers. Uh, So there are people who are faithfully following the truth of the Word of God. I'm glad here at Red House Baptist Church there are people who want to follow God's Word, who want to follow the truth, with the desire to know what God says and and do not fall into these uh, falsehoods and false teachings. But that doesn't mean the danger isn't there. There is, a some reason, a tendency in, in sinful man to embrace a lie over the truth. Uh, people typically want to hear what they want to hear, and whether it's the Word of God or not, they don't care. As long as it's pleasing to them, that is what they see to be supreme. So it's easy for people to become deceived by false teachers. It's easy because we, wanted to, we have a desire to hear what sounds good Uh, to us. See, false teachers, Jesus warned, or false prophets, are deceptive. Uh, We can be easily deceived by them. Sometimes they look good. It sounds good. It's what we want to hear. I noticed last year, and I try not to get political, last year a lot of people were going around prophesying, using, claiming to stand in the office of the prophet of God claiming that Donald Trump was going to win the presidency and that God had spoken those words to them. But did that happen? No. Now these people who claim to be prophets claim to be speaking on God's behalf. That Almighty God spoke to them personally, told them what was going to happen. Yet it didn't happen. Should people embrace those who claim to hear from God and then it not be true? Well, according to Scripture, a prophecy that didn't come true was not of the Lord. It was called a false prophecy, and it was produced by a false prophet. And uh, the, very early on in Scripture, in Deuteronomy, it, the Bible makes that clear that there are false prophets And people who claim to be speaking on God's behalf and they are telling lies ought not to be embraced. Instead, they should be called out and seen to be liars. But instead, for some reason in Christianity, people see that to be mean, hateful, unloving, or maybe people just got it wrong. Maybe people just weren't really lying. Maybe they just misunderstood. But if we're dealing with people who are claiming to be hearing from God, if we're dealing with people who claim to be preachers of the Word of God, people who claim to be followers of God, they ought to be held accountable for what they are saying 
and what they are doing. And I believe that for all people, I'm not just calling out other people, I mean even myself, if there's something in my teaching, there's something in what I say uh, that goes against God's word, I need to be called out on it. We need to hold each other accountable and not just, well, that's what we wanted to hear. Last year, many people wanted to hear that Donald Trump was going to win the presidency. So if someone came along saying, yeah, that's what God said, he's going to win the presidency, people were willing to embrace it. But just, it's, just because it's what you wanted to happen didn't mean that God actually said it or that that prophet was actually telling the truth, that person claiming to be a prophet, rather. We need to be aware. Be aware of those around you. Be aware of who you are listening to because there are false prophets and you know people might say but they seem innocent and harmless well, Jesus says they're wolves in sheep clothing and wolves have no desire but to destroy the sheep people might say they're just speaking what they believe to be true well that should be a little scary we should never just speak what we believe to be true we should be speaking what the word of God declares to be true and declaring what God has said and that's it I have no right to add to God's word I have no right to claim something uh, that God has spoken something he didn't speak I'm not God God is God and he's given us his word and there is no people having their own truths of what they believe and don't believe there's one truth and it's found in the word of God all anything that come short of the truth that we find in God's word is a lie and is a falsehood. It is not true. And many people think that there's no way that I could ever be deceived. You know, we have a prideful disposition about us that there's no way that we could ever listen to someone who's telling something that's not true. There's no way that we could ever hear someone and, and believe them and they're telling us something false. But don't ever be too prideful to think such a thing. We all need to be aware of the danger of deception. And, and Satan is the chief deceiver. And he works trying to bring down God's people through an avenue of deception. Uh, just recently there was a, a, a Christian apologist who died and uh, just last year. And then it came out this past winter that he had did many horrible things to women and he was a horrible uh, person in his actions, very sinful. But while he was here on this earth, people thought he was the greatest person. I even listened to him. I followed him. I read many of his books. And I'm not saying the things that he spoke weren't true, but I am saying that his life, his life represented someone who was a deceiver. His lifestyle was that of a false prophet. And it's a sad thing that he died in that state uh, with no one even knowing and, and the truth not being known. So we can be deceived. And uh, I think a great danger that is here in the world today is, uh, used to be televangelists, uh, evangelists on TV, many people who, who were speaking false things. I'm not saying all TV preachers are bad. I'm just saying you, there's a danger there. Now it's a lot on social media, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook. There's a lot of preachers on there. Yeah, there's a lot of preachers on there who are telling things that aren't true, that don't line up with the Word of God. So as Christians, we need to be aware of what the truth is and aware of the danger that we uh, could come across something that's not true. We ought to be able to filter that through and say, hey, that don't line up with the Word of God. I'm not listening to that anymore. And not just embrace it when they said they're a Christian. They said they were speaking for God. Therefore, it must be true, and we ought not say a word about it. We can't judge them. If something is false, we have the right to judge that it is false. It's not wrong or evil to do so. It's, it's right, and it's actually following Jesus' warning uh, to be aware of false prophets, to be concerned about those who may tell something that's not true concerning God. And uh, there's a story in the Bible, and I'll briefly cover it. Uh, that I think serves as a good representation of what I'm talking about today. And it's found in the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 22. And I would encourage you to, if you want to pause, uh, if you're listening right now, and go back and, 
and read this chapter or, or after this is over and you listen, I would encourage you to go read the entire chapter of First Kings chapter 22 because it's a really interesting story. And honestly, it was uh, brought to my attention last year if I was, as I was doing my yearly uh, Bible reading, and I just thought it was a really amazing story. And I learned of this prophet who was a very uh, humble st servant of God, who was willing to tell the truth, who was known as being a true prophet of God. And uh, the story is of uh, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat and uh, Ahab, who were both kings, one king, uh, Ahab being king of the northern kingdom of Israel, Jehoshaphat being king of the southern kingdom of Israel, and they were going to come into an alliance to go to war against another nation. And this was Ahab, who was known as a wicked king. This was his idea. And uh, Jehoshaphat had the idea and said, well, let's seek the Lord's will first before we do this, Ahab. I'm not going to go in alliance with you before we go to war uh, until I hear to see if this is the Lord's will. And it said the king of Israel, that's Ahab, he gathered the prophets about 400 and he asked them, should I go to war or should I refrain? And they replied, march up and the Lord will hand it over to the king. 400 people claiming to be prophets of God told King Ahab, yeah, go ahead and do it. The Lord will give you the victory. These prophets were telling Ahab what he wanted to hear, but was it the truth? No. Because Jehoshaphat asked, isn't there a prophet of the Lord here anymore? Let's ask him. And it, uh, the king of Israel, that's Ahab, said something really interesting. Jehoshaphat, he said, there's still one man who can inquire of the Lord. And he says it very down. But I hate him because he never prophesies good about me, but only disaster. He is Micaiah, son of Imlah. So he says there's a prophet named Micaiah, and I hate him because he only tells the truth. And it's never good about me. Isn't that interesting? He hated the person who was willing to tell the truth. The Micaiah had a testimony of being a person who told the truth, but he was only one. Yet 400 other people were there claiming to be prophets, but they were telling things that were false. Uh, a warning is, right off the bat, uh, just because it's the majority telling you something doesn't mean it's always true. We ought to be aware that 400 people were telling Ahab, yeah, go to war. But Micaiah comes and he tells something much different. Micaiah comes and he tells Ahab and Jehoshaphat that if they go to war, Ahab's going to die. And, and that's just a summary of the story. And in doing so, one of the actual false prophets comes over and hits Micaiah because he doesn't want to hear him say that. And Ahab doesn't believe him. Micaiah says, well, if you come back alive once you go to war, I am a liar. Well, if you read the story, you'd see that Ahab goes to war and he dies in the war because he failed to listen to the prophet Micaiah who was telling him the truth. He wasn't telling him what he wanted to hear, but he was telling the truth. Although the other false prophets told Micaiah, it told Ahab a lie. And Ahab believed the lie and it led to his destruction. What do you desire to hear from a preacher, from a pastor? Do you desire to hear the truth or do you want to hear what sounds good to you? Oh, we ought to desire to hear the truth. And, and I believe it's important, something I was thinking about the other day, that we pay attention to what the preacher is preaching when he is preaching. I know that was a lot of the same word there, preaching, preaching, preaching. But we focus on the truth. Oftentimes people per focus on the personality. They focus on the way the words are being presented. Uh, they don't like the way someone speaks. If they don't speak loud, if they don't speak, if they speak too monotone, people say they get bored. But is that really the idea of listening to the preaching of God's Word? No. The idea is to listen to the truth that's being proclaimed and then apply it to our lives, to actually pay attention. Regardless of how the speaker is presenting the message, as long as it is the truth, we are accountable to God to listen 
and apply it uh, to our lives. And I think there's, uh, that was just a side note, but I think there's some lessons that we can learn from Micaiah. Because he was a man known to be a real prophet of God, which would indicate that he had a good reputation when it came to his life and relationship with the Lord. He had a good relationship with the Lord because he had a reputation for having a good relationship with the Lord. He never told people what they wanted to hear. He spoke what God wanted them to hear. And he was committed to speaking only the truth. He was a subject of good character. But, although he was a person of good character, he experienced character assassination by the false prophets. And actually, he was put in jail uh, while the, they went to war. And, and he was there in jail while they went to war, and Ahab ended up being killed there during the battle. What can we learn for our own lives? What can we learn from Micaiah? And what can we learn uh, to be aware of false prophets and the, the danger of deception? Uh, we can be known by our relationship with the Lord above all else. And we should be willing to please God at all cost. Be committed to the truth and only the truth. That is what should be supreme in our lives. Be committed to the truth and only the truth. Let the truth of God guide you. Let the truth of God direct you. Let it fill your mind and your heart. Let it be applied to your life. Live a life of truth. You see, there's also another danger. We can say we're sound on everything and know the correct doctrines, know the correct theology, uh, go to the, what we would say is a good church. But if our life is not being lived out according to God's Word, uh, we could be deceiving ourselves into thinking we're something that we're not. And we should always be prepared to be mocked, persecuted, and falsely accused. That's a fact of, in reality of life. When we're willing to take a stand to follow the truth of God's word, where you're willing to live a life that pleases the Lord, and you're willing to shun out uh, deceivers and false prophets and only follow God and His truth, you're going to be mocked, you're going to be persecuted, and you're going to be falsely accused. It's inevitable. But I think it's worth it. I think that God's truth, God's word, God's God is worthy of our dedication to Him and to the truth. You know, I've, I've noticed uh, that any church, any denomination who begins to evolve on the truth of God's Word, who begins to change the way they view the truth of God's Word, who begins to change some teachings that go contrary to the doctrines. Uh, that we hold to as Christians that are true and that are founded upon God's Word. Any church, any people group, any Christian group that moves away from that begins on a slippery slope. And you can look at churches from 20, 30 years ago who started on that and where they are today. It only leads downhill because they only continue to go towards uh, against the truth and the ways of lies. So I warn you today, be aware of the truth, know it, follow it, love it. And then also, don't listen to false teachers. Don't listen to false prophets that I talked about at the beginning. Those who, who claim to be prophets of God, speaking on God's behalf, don't listen to them. I know that might sound harsh to some of you, and you might say, well, they're good preachers, I enjoy listening to them. If someone's claiming to speak on God's behalf, and they tell you something that is not true, they are not of God. And that needs to be understood uh, by all Christians. And it needs to be put in practice, especially in a country like America where we claim to be uh, so, uh, with so many Christians all around us, uh, we don't need to be promoting falsehoods. When we have a true God who's given us His true word uh, to follow. Uh, so I would encourage you today to go back and read uh, what I read today in uh, 1 Kings 22. Read that entire story. It's a really awesome story about the prophet Micaiah. And I hope that it, it will bless you and be a lesson for you. Because this is something I need to be warned of as a minister and as a Christian, as a follower of the Lord. 
who, who listen to many different speakers frequently, I need to be aware of the truth. Thank you.